Hello and welcome. My name is Jessica Moreno. I am the Conservation Science Director for the Coalition for Sonoran Desert Protection out of Tucson, Arizona. My pronouns are she and her. Today I want to talk to you about our community science program out of Oro Valley, um, which we are crawling, calling Crossing Through Your Neighborhood. This is about the benefits of using community science to monitor wildlife movement pre and post construction of wildlife crossing structures in an urban interface. That's all to say, involving the community in this project to engage them and allow them to have ownership over the project as well. At the Coalition for Sonoran Desert Protection, we are protecting the desert, uh, primarily the biodiversity of the Sonoran Desert in Southern Arizona. And we do this through science-based advocacy, education, and collaboration. We work primarily in Pima County, which is in Southern Arizona and borders on Sonora, Mexico. We're very grateful to work and live on traditionally native lands, including those belonging to the Otham, Tono Otham, and Pascal Yaqui. And 20 years ago, we got started based on this idea of protecting wildlife linkages in Pima County and the creation of the Sonoran Desert Conservation Plan. So much of our work is implementing the Sonoran Desert Conservation Plan in a number of different ways. One of those ways is through community science work. Currently, we have projects and a majority of the wildlife linkages we've identified in the Sonoran Desert Conservation Plan. And the first of these that we got started in was in Oral Valley, just north of Tucson, Arizona, or downtown Tucson. This linkage is a really important wildlife movement corridor between the Santa Catalina Mountains and the Tortolita Mountains. And it's bisected or divided by State Route 77, also called Oracle Road. This is dividing a regionally important wildlife linkage and is ever expanding and growing. Um, this linkage is threatened by a growing network of new roads and development. It encompasses Catalina State Park and it threads its way through um, expanding urban and suburban interface in the town of Oral Valley. In 2012, the Coalition for Sonoran Desert Protection began a community science and monitor wildlife monitoring project using camera traps um, to track the presence of mo and movement of wildlife in the linkage in conjunction with planning and advocacy efforts to fund necessarily wildlife, necessary wildlife crossing structures. These crossing structures were built in 2016, thanks to voter approved funds through the Pima County Regional Transportation Authority. This was the first wildlife bridge in the Sonoran Desert. And there was also an additional wildlife underpass associated with it as well. And these were able to be built um, in conjunction with, or as part of the expansion of State Route 77 from a four lane highway into a six lane divided highway. Arizona Game and Fish Department began monitoring the structures themselves. While our efforts have been focused on engaging the surrounding community and residents in taking ownership of the project to monitor the surrounding habitat. To date, there have been over 13,000 animal crossings recorded by Arizona Game and Fish on the wildlife bridge and underpass, and its use continues to increase for the most abundant species, including coyote, bobcat, mule deer, white-tailed deer, and javelina, also called collared peccary. In addition, we've seen white-nosed coati and badgers. The structures have been highly successful. However, there were gaps in the wildlife fencing due to jurisdictional issues and other challenges, and we pushed that down the road, so to speak, in order to complete the wildlife crossing construction. So animals were able, especially around the underpass, where we have a community on either side, uh, to come up and get in through um, the openings of the neighborhood, past the sound wall, on either end. Working with local residents and volunteers, uh, we were able to find a solution. It was many years in the making, and um, eventually what we landed on was um, monitoring the gaps 
so we can see what animals are there. And in this way, we were able to show the residents that yes, animals are coming up through these gap areas in the neighborhood. Um, and the end result was a pretty elegant solution um, thanks to the involvement of the town of Oro Valley and the Regional Transportation Authority, who was able to fund it um, with remaining wildlife fencing dollars. And the town of Oro Valley, who was willing to um, take over maintenance in the long term to build vehicle ga gates, basically, um, at the community entrances, um, which would not be locked because they're to provide public access, but would successfully keep the wildlife um, funneled towards those crossing structures. Our program is powered by community science, and we could not do this without the volunteers and indeed um, they're the reason why we, we, we do this work. Um, our team consists of 38 desert monitors, we call them, who check the wildlife cameras, and 18 desert identifiers who, from their homes, are sorting the photos and identifying the species inside the images. We also have been working on a Critter Cam for Kids program where in collaboration with the Catalina Foothill School District, students uh, wrapped this project up into their curriculum. And we're learning about the species using the crossing structures, about wildlife linkages, and even getting to sort and identify some of those photos themselves. Our desert monitors go out in teams or in couples. They go out once a month to check those cameras in the area, and most of them are local residents around the structures. They share their data, their photos back with us using WeTransfer. So we've adapted to the pandemic by pivoting and providing ways for volunteers to do everything remotely. And that also includes our desert identifiers. Um, originally, volunteers would come into the office with me and um, sort photos there. And um, once the pandemic hit, you know, we had to we had to change and adapt, um, and it's actually been way more efficient. Um, we switched our database over to a new system that allowed us to have volunteers work from home remotely. They can work at their own pace, on their own schedule. They're often the first one to see the photos. Um, unfortunately, it's only um, available for PC users right now, but we're working on that. Um, but we saw a huge increase in volunteers in the last year or two, last 18 months or so, uh, by making this change. Um, our volunteer retention has always been really good. We currently have 28 active uh, wildlife monitors. And at the beginning of the pandemic, we had four desert identifiers doing all this work. And um, by allowing folks to work from home, now 18. Uh, some of them coming from as far as Canada and Vermont. So that's really exciting to see um, that happening. We give them lots of hard work to do. They get to identify a number of different species from four different types of skunks, um, telling the difference between mule deer and whitetail. They've also had the chance to document some rare and fun species in this study area, including white-nosed coati, which largely um, stay up in the higher elevations in Catalina Mountains, uh, but also ringtail, mountain lion. Uh, we seem to have a resident female in the area, at least one, um, and badger. And also a very exciting sighting of bighorn sheep, which were recently reintroduced into the Catalina Mountains and are one of those species that we really hope um, use the wildlife bridge um, to access the Tortolita Mountains as they historically did. Volunteers are using our access database through um, the Colorado um, Parks and Wildlife. Um, it's the people who developed it. And that's working really great. Um, we're able to send packets of photos to volunteers uh, via email, and we transfer, and then they send us back their, um, their results, which we then can compare with other volunteers um, to make sure everything's verified and in order. 
Now nearly 10 years since the inception and five years post-construction of the wildlife crossing structures, this project has documented over 65 different species across um, 55 sites. We now have 20 sites um, that are active, stratified um, east and west of SR-77. Altogether, over 330,000 photos and 56 volunteers involved in the project. Among the species that we've seen includes um, coyote, bobcat, desert tortoise, Gila monsters, the bighorn sheep, mule deer, uh, coos white-tailed deer, javelina, mountain lion, badger, ringtail, and white-nosed coati. We're able to see um, where species are across the landscape, where we're seeing them the most. Um, um, and this community science gathered data of wildlife activity within the study area has complemented the um, studies done by Game and Fish, including wildlife passage rates, roadkill hotspots, and GPS collar tortoise and mule deer movement studies that the Game, that Game and Fish has done. Um, and then together, um, this data is um, giving us a more holistic understanding of the success of the project while informing mitigation strategies and lessons learned to improve highway safety and improve regional wildlife connectivity. We stratified our camera sites east and west of Oracle Road to compare Big Wash on the west and the Arizona state lands um, to Catalina State Park on the, on the east. And over time, we're actually able to show some really interesting results um, before and after the wildlife crossings were built, including a significant increase in mule deer activity, especially west um, of the crossing structures. We're also able to show um, some responses to other changes in the landscape. This particular graph is just from one single site, which we call the deer camera. It has been active since 2012. And you can see um, mule deer activity really ramping up and increasing um, after the wildlife crossing structures were built. And then um, in the end of 2017, right at the beginning of 2018, a multi-use trail was built um, in Big Wash. And you can see there's a little bit of a slowdown in activity and then it increases again here. Several emerging challenges, including closing remaining wildlife fencing gaps with local neighborhood buy-in and addressing the development of an encroaching multi-use trail were helped and informed by the study and by the engagement of the local residents and volunteers. Big Wash Trail um, was <laughs> built right at the entrance of our wildlife underpass about a year after it was constructed. So the trail was built, I think at the end, December 2017, right at the beginning of 2018. Um, and as you can see, uh, its path went right along Big Wash and very close to our wildlife underpass. We were able, um, before it was physically built and shovel ready, to get this pathway moved a little bit further away and hug the other side of the wash so it stayed further away from the underpass. Um, and then thanks to the data and thanks to our volunteers and our local residents in the area, we were also able to convince um, the county to put in signage showing that it was a wildlife movement area, closing it from dawn to dusk so that wildlife wouldn't be disturbed, and excluding vehicles, putting in vehicle barriers and closing it to um, motorized use. Uh, we had um, problems when the trail was first built with um, ATVs and trucks in the wash, and so that was um, super helpful. And of course, we couldn't do any of this work without our wonderful volunteers. Um, they're the ones who are making all of this possible. And to our funders and donors and project partners, who um, of course we couldn't do this without and are instrumental. I also want to acknowledge one particular volunteer, Bob Craddy, who passed away this last December, 2020 and was an instrumental part of the project from its very beginning in 2012. So we miss Bob and are grateful for his help with this project. If you wanna contact me, um, you can reach me at jessicamoreno at sonorandesert.org and you can always visit our website at sonorandesert.org. Thank you so much.